speaks to each and every one of us and to our hearts and to our lives exactly what we need to hear and exactly the revelation we need to hear, Father God. I thank you for that right now. I thank you that lives have changed, hearts have changed. And I thank you that love just overwhelms us, and I thank you for that right now, Father God. I thank you that you just come into this place right now and fill it with your spirit. I thank you that every every inch of this, of this room is just filled with your spirit, Father God. And I thank you that we leave here changed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. 
Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, God's love, it'll find you, amen? Amen. It'll work through all the junk, and as much as you run, it'll still find you, amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't run from him enough. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 He's got longer legs. God's got longer legs than you do. He can fit the world in the palm of his hand. Uh, you don't even have to take a step. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you for never turning away. Even when we turn away or if we turn away, Father God, thank you for always being there. Thank you for always loving us, always caring for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the God of my heart and you are the God of this city. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Amen. Greater things. There's more to come. We haven't seen it all yet. We haven't seen the best yet. Hallelujah. We're going on with Jesus. Can you say amen? There's more in store. There's more that lies ahead. There, we, are, we are headed toward the final exit of the church as the triumphant church. We're on the way. Can you say amen? Read somebody and say, there's better coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then you can sit down or be seated. So glad to have you this morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. Sometimes. Oh. This morning she fell away. Hallelujah. And we apologize to those who have been trying to watch us live. We, uh, we're having network issues. Now it's fine now. It started going more than fine. Well, it's fixed. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. We're glad it's working now. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to remind you on Wednesday nights, we're still teaching on the authority of the believer. And uh, we have uh, the Believer's Authority being taught. And if you want to come out and be a part of that, if you can't be here, then pick us up online. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And also, um, uh, what? I'm just trying to think of something else. We, we got announced. I don't think we have more announcements right now. Other than, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And uh, we, we do want to say... Um, to the families and uh, to those over the years of our country who've given their life a sacrifice for the nation. Uh, this is Memorial Day. This isn't Veterans Day. This isn't honoring the veterans. This is honoring those who gave their life. It's Memorial Day. So to uh, the current families of fallen uh, soldiers in our history, we, we thank you for the sacrifice your family made in giving up your loved ones there and, and to our nation. And uh, when you're being patriotic, that's not very Christian. <coughs> I want you to know that most of the gospel that's been preached on the earth has come from this country. Amen. At one time, 90% of the world's missionaries were coming from America. So God raised up this nation with all of its faults and all the issues. It was raised up to be a launching pad to preach the gospel throughout all the earth. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And... Uh, there's people waiting for the demise of America, and uh, that's ungodly. God wants to use this nation. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, uh, thankful for all those who have given and sacrifice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, it's time to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand, Brother Benny or Brother Joe. Help you out right there. Glory to God. Give with, give him with a check or give him electronically. You can go ahead and uh, send that in. We'll be glad for that to come in electronic means. Glory to God. And uh, how many people are having to work tomorrow? Bless your heart. We're sorry you got to work. It's like everybody else is off. Well, be blessed while you're working. Hallelujah. The rest of y'all enjoy your day off. Glory to God. Amen. Act like you're on vacation. Yeah, stay off Facebook. Some hey, people need to. Do what? I didn't hear yeah, that. I said some people need to. Yeah, some people need to. <laughs> it never hurts to put it down for a couple of days. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to take a picture of everything you eat. I do. Yes, sir. I mean, I, well, I'm Jamie, I'll go out to eat and I'm about to dive into the dessert. Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> what? I take a picture. It's got to go on Facebook. I want to eat the thing. I don't care if I can look at it later. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we love y'all. God bless you. Are y'all ready to give? Get everything ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the people as they tithe and give. Thank you that heaven's windows are open unto us and you empty out on this blessing. We don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, I should receive that to the kingdom of God. Praise God forever. And we are excited this thing got fixed. It's always good. When, we don't know why. You know, uh, sometimes it just wants to be honoring. You know, 
God don't like honor or ugly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. And now, Children's Church and Preschool, you guys just been to see Miss Jane. Praise the Lord. Y'all have a good time. Hallelujah. And uh, wait, there's a finish of receiving the offering. Glory to God. God is a good God. All the time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead and get your Bibles out, if you will. Open them up to the uh, book of 1 John, which we our foundation text once again. 1 John chapter 5. And by the way, this is where the name of the church came from. Glory to God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it says here, For whosoever or whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Isn't it good to know that our faith overcomes the world? Well, I don't know if I got any faith. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Your faith groweth exceedingly. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Amen. You know, this, this is just a fix for all your negative answers. Amen. 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 Got some folks who spend so much time finding ways not to get what God said you could have. Yeah, right. All right. So we started this and we're teaching on what, you know, what to do when faith seems weak and victory lost. And, uh, you know, that, that is a problem. Uh, if your faith seems weak and your victory seems lost. That can be a serious problem. Can you, can you say, uh, help me Jesus? Help me Jesus. Yeah, praise the Lord. But we talk, we're talking about so far, uh, one of the things we need to do when our faith seems weak and our victory loss is recognize the source. Uh, and we've made that twofold. Well, recognize the source of the problem. Recognize the source of the answer. Second, we said make sure the promises of God cover what you're asking for. Don't be asking God for stuff that he didn't promise you. Amen. He didn't promise you somebody else's wife. He didn't promise you somebody else's car. Amen. He didn't promise you that the devil will never bother you again as long as you live. Amen. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, the master himself, when, when he overcame the devil and the temptation of the wilderness and the temptation of the wilderness, the Bible says he departed from him for a season. He came back. Came back every time trying to kill him. Are you here? All right. Third, we said, be sure you're not living in sin. That was the most enjoyable part of the message. Y'all still getting excited over it. Amen. Amen. And you need to go back and listen to these teachings if you want to be able to uh, get all the information. And then uh, fourth, we said, be sure no doubt or unbelief is permitted in your life. Amen. So we're moving on to number five today, and that is uh, to sincerely desire the benefit. Sincerely desire the benefit. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things serve ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That's right. Praise God. It says, what things serve ye desire. Very interesting here. The Greek word translated desire is also tra translated lust. Okay? Now, lust, and honestly, we understand this word, how this word is used, lust can be, a, 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 a lust is a strong desire. Mm -hmm. Lust is wrong. Well, the, Bible says, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit lusteth the envy against us. So it can't be always a bad connotation. It means, it means a strong desire, a driving desire. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, uh, you to have a lust or a strong desire for another person's wife or husband is, is sin, obviously. Amen. But the Bible says what they, so we desire, what we have a strong desire, a lust for, in a good connotation. When you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Now we know this, that faith begins where the will of God is known. Amen. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that means you're not going to have faith if you're not using the word of God. Or not Bible faith. Amen. 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 Remember that, that Peter said, there is given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be, might be partakers of the divine nature. 
we have exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, what those great, great and precious promises, we can partake of the divine nature. We can partake of that which God offers. We can partake of that which God has made provision for. We can partake of that, of, of that which the Father wants us to have. You can't have what he didn't promise you. There's not a basis for faith for it. So you can't run around and start confessing, you know, I believe that I receive, you know, whatever. That's the Bible doesn't promise you. Well, Brother Hagin wrote a book that says you can have what you say. Go read the whole thing. Don't stop at the title. That demonstrates a tad bit of shallowness on your part. I did say a tad bit. Quite frankly, a humongous amount. All right? No, you got to find out what the Word of God says. If you want to know what you can have from God, you're going to have to get into the Word of God and find out what it promises you. And then you have to have a strong, a strong desire. Now, sometimes desire can drive us to the Word. When you're sick and want to be healed, that can drive you to the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you really want it and you want to get it from the word, if you want to get it by faith, you're going to have to get into the word. Yes. Amen. See, in your desire, I'm telling you, your desire to receive from God will govern how hard you go after it. Yes. Now, uh, you know, I remember last November when they sat in the house, oh, last of October, right that last couple of days of October, right into the first of November. Um, I'm sitting in the hospital and that guy's telling me he's going to cut my toe off. I, I, I kind of nicknamed him Mr. Whackin, uh, Hacky Wacky. Right. He's ready to whack my toe off. And I'm like, whoa, Nelly. Yeah. You know, yeah. hold that horse. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. But, and, and then, you know, I got one of the doctors said, well, we'll give you, we'll give you a little bit of time to, to uh, see how this turns out. He told me later he expected my toe to come off, he just, but he just gave me a little bit of time to, you know, go there. I didn't play. My desire to keep my toe drove me to the Word Amen. in that arena like never before Amen. and stayed after it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, my desire was driving me to do things that, you know, that had I not been sick or had such a situation like my toe in that, sick, that circumstance, you know, may not have done. Uh -huh. But the desire, so sincerely desire, amen, amen. the results, what you, what you want. Do you want to prosper? Then you're going to have to get into the word on prosperity. Do you want to be liberated? You're going to have to get into the word on how to be free. Yeah. Amen. 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 You want to walk, you walk in authority and power. You're going to have to get into the scriptures about authority and power. Yeah. Amen. Your desire for the results is what drives you to get into the word of God, to find out what it promises you, how it promises you, and how you can have it. Amen. 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 Proverbs 3, 2 through 5 says, for length of day, let's back up, let's just go to Proverbs 3. I, I kind of, you know, sometimes when I make my notes, I'll leave off a preceding verse just because it's, you know, I'm ready to get after something. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And sometimes when I do that, I leave out what is understood, but not really, um, when you pick up, start reading it, you kind of maybe shouldn't have done it that way. So Proverbs 3, um, that can't be 3, it's got to be 23, that is not Proverbs 3. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 I hit Psalms. They both start with a P, and they're real close to each other. I'm looking at it going, that's, that's a good scripture, but it's not what I'm, you know, here. Here, Proverbs 3, 1, let's listen to this. My son, forget not my law. Now, what does the word law refer to when we're reading in New Testament thought? The word. Okay. Statutes, commandments, uh, precepts, all that's referring to the word of God. Okay. My son, forget not my law or forget not my word. But let thine heart keep my commandments. Again, the word of God. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and, or, and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. 
write them upon the table of thy heart, so thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. In all your ways acknowledge, I'm sorry, I kind of jumped up. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Notice, he says to keep the word. Amen. Why? Because for length of days and long life and peace, they'll add unto thee. Amen. See, the word of God has the power to produce in you the thing you desire. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But you've got to be sincere about it. You've got to go after it. Amen. You've got to be all over it like ugly on a monkey. <laughs> amen. Green on grass, white on rice. Can you say Amen. You, I know rice is brown before they polish it off, but you know, most of us grow up, grow up eating polished rice. Amen. All right? Hallelujah. you got to have a sincere desire for the benefit. You can't just kind of uh, sit around and kind of hope so, maybe so, wish so, and it happen. There has to be something in you that drives you to the Word of God to get the answer so you can exercise faith and receive it and walk in it. And that is that sincere desire. What things forever you desire when you pray, believe that you, what things forever you strongly lust after. The thing you, now listen, don't, don't, don't take that out of context and start going and strongly lusting after something that God, God says is sin. Amen. Amen. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to let you know how, how that word is used in the, in the original language and how that we need to understand it's a strong, it's, 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 it's more than just a simple, well, I wouldn't mind being healed, but if I've got to read the Bible three times a day, or I got to listen to tapes and study, and you know, and I got to make confessions, go ahead and cut off my toe. Well, I won't about to do that. Well, then you can believe God to regrow one. Well, I just can believe God to keep the one you got. Amen. Romans 10, 17, before I quoted this, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Um, first, 2 Peter 1, 4, we quoted, given unto us exceeding great and, great and precious promises, that by these we may par be partakers of the divine nature. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Because, see, when we get to the word of God, this is important, church. We have to settle once and for all that the word of God is true. Are y'all here? Amen. That the word of God does not lie. Amen. There has been a big, big, big push in the last few years to deny the authority of the word of God, the accuracy of the word of God, the authenticity of the word of God, and the fullness and completeness of the word of God. You're getting Christians running around saying, well, you can't fit everything about God into one book. Right, we get that. I know. Mm -hmm. But he fit into one book everything he wanted you to know right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That was necessary for you to live the way that he wanted you to live. Yeah. Don't be coming with no special divine revelation that countermands what this book says. Right. Yeah. See, that's, that, that's all working towards men getting revelation or be believing they're getting revelation about things that the word of God counter man's is opposite of because you can't have all of God in that book. We have the revelation that is pertinent to the believer for this era, for this age. Amen. We'll get to find out whatever the other stuff is when we get to heaven. Hello? And I don't even want to hear your stupid mess that, you know, people come along and they well, you know, I know the Bible says this, but God showed me. You know what you need to do? You need to pull a brown. The devil's a lie! The devil's a lie! I mean, some of y'all have never seen Medea, huh? You got to go watch some Medea movies to see brown in action. If nothing more than just to see clothes he wears. Y'all know what I'm talking about? How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. He wears some of the, the craziest outfits. But 
We get, we've got this new narrative that's going around, and, and quote, among Christians. Why? Why is it going around? Number one is they want a certain narrative in their life. And they'll find out the Word of God prohibits or works against that narrative. And so those start saying, well, the Word of God was written by men and was, you know, was limited. Example, homosexual marriage. Now, the Word of God expressly forbids this. But then you got people coming along going, but God loves people. We, 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 that's just a narrow interpretation of the church. Uh, it was a narrow interpretation by Paul. So it's not a matter that you hate people. You're not against people. You don't want people to have joy, but you don't. You, you can't go out there and change the narrative of the scripture to fit what society wants and society desires. Okay? Now listen, they've already got people saying the man to be able to marry their dolphin or their dog or whatever else, and their horse. So don't, you know, hello? But well, they love that horse. You're sick. Yeah. You got devils. We don't change the narrative of scripture to fit the narrative of society. There's a big push. Big push. It's been going on for years. It's getting more and more open. Big push for... Um, well, how can I say it without sounding so disgusting? Other than sex with children. Pedophiles. The narrative is now being changed. The term is no longer pedophile in the, in the psychological community. Someone who is a pedophile is no longer being called a pedophile. They're being called minor attractive adults. Why? Because if you can change the terminology, you can change the way people think about it. And what, what's wrong with a, a child who wants to be engaged with relationships with a 30-year-old. A lot. Hello? Back in the day, you used to take you out back and shoot you. And, everybody, and nobody did anything about it because you, you, know, you, were, you were taking advantage of, of innocent children. So we, we get these narratives, and they come into the church. I just saw a video this, last, this past week where they were worshiping. Uh, they were having the Beyonce mass. And they come in and, and to worship the gods herself, Beyonce. And, you know, and they're all in there going, talking about how, you know, it's just love and this church, you know. And, and, and they're, they're, they're there, work to, 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 they're, they're singing songs in a way that would sound like a gospel song, but it's all about Beyonce and, and this, this love thing. Well, the love of God, The love of God is the love of God. It's not human love. It loves people. And the love of God sent Jesus. And the love of God sent Jesus to deliver them from the captivity of bondage of being under Satan's control. Amen. Not so you can keep staying like you are. Amen. The love of God said, you know, come unto me all you labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Amen. The love of God says repent. Go a different direction. Amen. You can't stay the way you are. Amen. Now, I've come to empower you and to liberate you so you can, Jesus says that. But it's not so you can stay like you are. We all had to repent. We all had to take a, a turn. We all had to go in a different direction than continuing to follow the, 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 the body of sin and the, the lifestyle of sin, continuing to be a children of disobedience under, and, and in rebellion against God. Amen. We all had to do that. Amen. Amen. And so, um, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Again, I'm in the wrong book again. I'm sitting over here in 1 Corinthians. So, uh, look down at verse 17. When I therefore was thus minded, I, did I use lightness or the things that I purposed? Did I purpose according to the flesh? Now, let me stop right there because that just kind of sums up what I just said. There are too many people in the church right now 
who want to go with how they feel about something. They use love, but a world's definition of love as the catch all for why they can do anything they want to because God loves you just like you are. No. God did not love you like you are. God loved you and wanted to restore you to the place he originally intended for you to be. So he sent Jesus to deliver you from what you are. He does not love you like you are. He loves you and hates what you are. How can he do that? He hates the fact you're associated with Satan. He hates the fact that you've been born of Satan, that Satan's your father. He, and Jesus even said it. You're of your father, the devil. He hates that. Amen. And he loves you so much that he sent Jesus to deliver you from that. Amen. We get narratives that, you know, God, God made you like you are, just be like you are. No! God loved you while you were dead in your trespasses and sins so he could raise you up together and make you sit together in Christ. He came to deliver you from that and bring you out of that. Amen. That's what his love did. His love did not damn you to hell in the state that you're in. He sent Jesus to deliver you from that. Amen. But we went along, we get these, we get, we get these, these uh, carnal people, these people who aren't even born again, putting on robes, putting on a clerical collar, going around telling people what they think the scripture says, and they don't know their head from a hole in the ground. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, they won't even use scripture. They'll go by their feelings. They'll go by what they believe. I just believe God is love. He is love. He is love. Think about the love of God and in, 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 in the fact that, according to Ephesians, even while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, yeah. he quickened us together and made us alive together. Why? Why? What did Jesus tell them? Go say, tell them to repent for the kingdom of God's at hand. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Amen. Peter's sermon in Acts, said Acts 2.38. Amen. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in repentance anymore because everybody's going to be saved. What part of the Bible did you forget to read? A lot of it. Hello? No, the love of God looked at humanity lost without hope, without God in this world. The love of God saw that all mankind had been born of Satan because Adam committed high treason and, 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 and rebelled against him and turned against him and wouldn't follow after him. The love of God saw even in that state that he could reach out to redeem you from it, buy you back. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar. That word peculiar in the Greek really means purchased. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Amen. 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 You're no longer your own. God did not send Jesus. Let me say, let me say this. If God simply loving you like you were, you were created like you were supposed to be, and everything is just like it's supposed to be, and we all get to go to heaven, that Jesus came for no reason at all. Amen. And he died on the cross for no reason at all. Amen. And his blood was, the Father was a cruel and evil uh, God to send his son and cause him to die for us if he didn't need to. Amen. Hello. But only one could redeem man. Because all mankind was sold into slavery. And there, he's going to take over and left at 186,000 miles a second. Hello. How do you know? Because Jesus said, Jesus said, I beheld his lightning fall out of heaven. Yeah, the speed of light. It was probably warp 300. Star Trek ain't even there yet. 
Hello. Hyperspace, light speed, whatever you want to call it. He, he, you know, and the warping light speed is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a actual scientific concept that you can bend light and accelerate how fast it travels. Okay? That's where that whole idea comes from. I believe Satan came out of there at, at warp. <laughs> and he came out warped. Hello? But he tried to overthrow God. And now, since he couldn't overthrow the throne of God, he's trying to get people to overthrow God in their hearts by denying the truth of the word of God. Amen. That's right. Through cute little things. Well, God's bigger than that book. Then the God you're talking about is too big for me. One preacher told God one day, he said, he was sharing some revelation he had, and that man, and the other minister looked at him and said, uh, you have to prove that in the Bible for me. And the guy said, oh, oh, you won't find anything, you won't find this and that thing. I'm out beyond that. Hello? This is always an undermining. And Satan wants to undermine the authority of God's word for two reasons. One, to get people into error, and or two, to keep you out of faith. He wants you to question the word of God. And he hasn't changed since the beginning. Because when you go to Genesis, what's the first thing when he comes to Eve? Hath God said. For he knows in the day that you eat it, you'll become as gods, knowing good and evil. He said God's word was a lie. God's word wasn't true. God had ulterior purposes and motives keeping something from you. Y'all here, you go home. The Amplified Bible says here, as surely as God is trustworthy and faithful and means what he says, our speech and message to you has not been yes. That might mean no. Now, how do you know? We, we took on a whole thing in the 70s. Remember? And no meant yes, and yes meant no. Good meant bad, and bad meant good. Man, that is bad to the bone. Man, we think that was awesome. Right? Oh, that's great. Good. That means it was bad. Hello? Now, we all, we all do it. It became a cultural thing. It was inspired of the devil. Because the word of God says, let our yes be yes and our no be no. Hello? It did not tell us to start using, you know, you know phraseology that was opposite to express ourselves, why? We're undermining, we're undermining faith in the process. And the word of God comes back, well, you're just dealing in absolutes. The Bible's full of absolutes. When, you know, I remember uh, when I first got saved in that Pentecostal church, I had one, one of the other uh, young people in the church that, you know, Got up and went down in our Bible study or Sunday school classes. You know, God answers prayers three ways. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes maybe. Man, I quoted that. Because that sounded awesome. Until I was reading one day and I read this verse. And it says, it is and always was with him. Yes. I couldn't find that God answers prayer three ways. I couldn't find that. I could find the answer's prayer one way, and true prayer is in line with the Word of God. Yeah. 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 If it's not, it ain't prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Right. Amen. I thought it was the Holy Ghost Church. Right. I thought these people like to shout. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ the Messiah, who was preached among you by us, by myself, Sylvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it, it is and always the divine yes. For as many as the promises of God, they all find their yes answer in him, Christ. For this reason we also utter the amen, so be it, to God through him and his person and his agency to the glory of God. That's an amplified classic. 
when you're desiring the benefit, well, then that, why, why are you bringing all this about desiring the benefit? Because there always has to be a basis for faith. Now, you people go out there and lie to folks and tell them that, you know, God's bigger than the Bible and, you know, uh, with the implication. Now, I know he's bigger. But the implication they're trying to present is that they can get revelations about God that supersede anything we have in written scripture. But the word says, the word and the spirit agree. They're in harmony with one another. The Logos and the Parakletos, the Paraclete, are not in opposition with each other. They're in harmony together. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are a harmonious Godhead. One God manifests in three persons, one harmonious Godhead. You don't have the Holy Ghost going around circumventing Jesus, going, well, look, I know the Son came and said this, but there's some stuff you need to know that he, did, he, he doesn't want you to know about. Hello? Let me say this. Because the people saying this kind of stuff, they're just being used by the devil. The people saying this are saying that we don't have the encompassment, the full encompassment or the full uh, complement of what we need from Scripture. We can get special revelation. And here's the thing. The one that gave Paul and the writers the revelation is the one they, they're supposedly getting it from. If he wanted you to have it, he would have told them. You'd already, it'd already be here. There is not progressive revelation. What I mean by that is revelation that is continuing beyond the written scripture for the church now. I know there are things about God we don't know yet, but they're not necessary or important for us now. When we get to heaven, there'll be things that we'll learn about God that are deeper and greater. But in that setting, hello, but here, you're not going to get some revelation. We had it back in the 50s. I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm really talking about desiring the, sincerely desiring the benefit. These are things that undermine our ability to receive it. Back in the 50s, we had, there, was a, there was a great um, move of God. It came right on the heels of, um, of the healing revival. Now remember, the healing revival, and uh, you can go out and study church history, you find this out, it's pretty easy. Uh, it began about 1947, right at the end of World War II, right after the end of World War II. It lasted until 1958. I mean, people, they had people with tents all over the country. People getting healed everywhere. It was just a supernatural manifestation of God in the gifts of healings. And right on the end of that came what was referred to as the latter rain movement. And that was a time of restoration of the ministry gifts. Now up until that time, you pretty much had this belief that the gifts in the ministry of the body of Christ were the preacher, the pastor, and the evangelist. They didn't believe in apostles, prophets, or teachers, unless you were a Sunday school teacher. But there was a restoration at that time of the, 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 the ministry gift of the apostle, prophet, and teacher. Not to demean the pastor or the evangelist. The other ones were just added, got, got revelation about adding them back in where the church had taken them out. God never intended for them to be taken out. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints till we all come to the knowledge of Christ, till we all come to the fullness of the knowledge of Christ, to a perfect man, mature, Greek. Well, right near, right in the middle of the latter rain thing, move, I got to say, shouldn't call the thing, came this new revelation called the manifested sons of God. You may have heard the term about 20 years ago called kingdom now. Okay? 20, 25 years ago. Brother Bill remembers that. Some of us, some of us older ones may remember, remember that. Kingdom now was that the manifested sons of God were going to be manifested in the earth, and basically there was going to be a, a, a that Jesus was going to come, the rapture was to take all those who didn't get the revelation out of the earth. And they were going to be fully manifested as the sons of God, just like Jesus in the earth. It's called the manifest, and it, there was no scripture to support that. How do you know? 
For when he shall appear, we shall be as he is, for we shall see him as he is. It wasn't until the rapture of the church that we could be fully manifest in that sense of the full manifestation of the sons of God. The earth groaned until the manifestation of the sons of God. Well, that thing came and people started biting into it and started buying it up and it killed everything that was going on right then. It stopped it. Got resurfaced again in the late 70s, early 80s. You know? And, and, and what, one of the things that comes along with this kind of stuff is revelations you can't prove out with the Bible that you build everything on. You can't build anything on anything other than the Word of God. It has to be built on the Word of God. If it's a revelation that the Word of God doesn't undergird, you can't build anything on it. Hello. That's the value, the importance. But that's why Satan fights. That's why Satan gets people who go around that they know everything. Hello. And they don't. Because they're fighting, they're fighting against the revelation that's in the Word of God. That the Spirit of God... He will teach you. What did Jesus say the Holy Ghost would do? He would come and show, teach you all things whatsoever I have said unto you. Isn't that what he said? The teacher was going to come and teach us what the master said. What he meant. The revelation of it. He wasn't going to come and give you stuff that Jesus didn't talk about. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, Jesus, Jesus is going to have the Holy Ghost come and teach the church about the new birth, about living for God, about how to live and be above and not beneath, how to, how to be the righteousness of God in Christ. He, he, the Holy Ghost come and teach us that. He did not come and teach you something that's so wild and so far out that nobody's ever heard of it. Like one guy said one time, he said most new revelations are nothing but an old heresy repackaged. Yeah. It's just something that's gone around and come back again, the same old stuff, just in a different packaging. They'll do that stuff all the time. I mean, I, 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 uh, I think now Kraft uh, has come out with a different kind of shake and bake. I don't know. It's oven bake or something. And they own both of them. You know, Nestle, you remember how, how Nestle quick and now Nesquik yeah. kind of repackaged it a little bit? Same stuff, yeah. different package. Manifest the Son of God came back out his kingdom now. Pigs in the parlor come out in deliverance ministries. You get all kinds of stuff. Hello? This teaching, um, we get Gnostic teaching. Jesus didn't actually come in the flesh. He was only spiritual. That's just modern day. And that's just modern day Gnosticism. We keep getting these same doctrines rehashed because you get a generation of people who are looking for something beyond this. Now let's let's go let's go back and tie this back in. Segue back here. And the reason for that is, is because this is how you receive what you strongly desire. Amen. The Word of God. Amen. That's how you connect to it. That's how you receive it. And there's a battle going on to disconnect you from the written word of God. Because it wants to steal you of your faith. And it wants to make you impotent in the realm of faith. Because Satan knows the stronger you are in faith, the more trouble he's in. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of that? Amen. All right, praise God. Well, thank y'all for joining us today on, on, on Facebook. Remember this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until next time, we'll see you. Bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, amen. amen.